it's just one of them things you think we had good genes in our family everybody and I said, once I get retired and everything I'll get it checked as I said April the 30th I retired we had big plans my wife and me was going to play golf travel a little I was going to increase my farming operation fix up the house do things that we hadn't had time to do. May 25th, I'm diagnosed with colon cancer. We lived our life as if we had, as, as if we had control. Uh, we were planning to live into our 80s and we were planning to write later in our lives. We were married nearly 38 years she passed away two weeks before our 38th anniversary. We met in college. The reason I've waited so long is because I haven't had any insurance and um, I'm working two part-time jobs. Hey, my name is Sherry Burkhead and I'm getting ready to do a prep for a colonoscopy that I'm having tomorrow morning. Well, I started having stomach problems. Uh, stomach was like bloated, couldn't eat, uh, was losing my appetite, and all this happened after I retired of April the 30th and May, May the 25th, so I got a doctor's appointment with uh, my regular doctor, and uh, I told him what was going on, and he sent me for a scan, and it showed the tumor. I went in for a physical, and she was diagnosed with uh, cancer which was totally stunning because my wife lived a life because the, the, the female members of her family had heart problems. So she watched her heart for 40 years that, you know, that I knew her. And every time she went in for a, uh, a physical, they checked her heart, uh, had stress tests, things of that nature. That's what we were watching for. It wasn't the cancer that came later. Sometimes they have free screenings or free, like they have the, uh, those um, mammogram uh, clinics that you can go to and uh, they'll give it to you free or you can do it on a sliding scale. And uh, I have been able to get, get those done. I never had a pain one. I mean, I was, played golf, farmed, did what I wanted to do up until, uh, I retired, and right after I retired, I started having all kinds of stomach pain. I'm gonna tell you, it took our breath away. Um, you know, it was like the world stopped, and I had to catch my breath, and, I, and, and she told the doctor, she said, I don't feel sick. He says, I understand. He said, but you are sick, and you have four months to live. Well, I think it's unfortunate that there's not more uh, programs available for people that uh, don't have the income or the insurance to do that. I mean, I really believe that there should be free screenings for all kind of preventive care. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just the way the system is today, it's, it's hard to get uh, the health care that you need. And you know, a lot of us fall through the cracks when we do try to get assistance. And um, so really the only way you can is if you uh, know somebody that could help you or you have to just go without and just hope that nothing happens to you. I wish I had a good answer for that, why you put it off. I mean, uh, you just, it's just easy too easy not to call the doctor and make an appointment, and it shouldn't be because it's such a simple procedure. If people, you know, you might have one day or one night of getting cleaned out before you go to the doctor, but once you, you never, you don't feel anything. It's a simple procedure, and uh, I think maybe people need more education on it, but it's just, it's just one of those things that was too easy to put off.
Okay, now I'm opening my pills, and this is the Osmo Prep right here. And I'm supposed to take about 20 of these in, in the next hour or so. And right now, I'm taking four. They're pretty big, so I'm going to take two and two. And I'm supposed to finish this and wait. <laughs> so if I had a went when I turned 50, I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through now. What are you going through now? <laughs> Well, I've had surgery, uh, uh, just come out of the hospital, spent 19 days in the hospital. I had all kinds of complications. Uh, I've gone through chemo. I've lost about 40 pounds of weight. And hopefully, uh, since the surgery, uh, we've made the turn. This is round three. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I think I can do this. My wife was very private. Um, during this whole system, she continued to teach. She taught for a solid year uh, and didn't miss any classes. And it just allowed her to be normal in her life. And at the same time, she was fighting cancer, going in for chemotherapy on a regular basis. And my, myself and my kids rotated to make sure she got her cancer treatments. We, um, she had a cancer operation after a year and, um, in April of this year. Um, she had a blockage in her colon. The doctor had to go in and cut the cancer out. They were able to get all of the colon cancer out of a colon. We thought we had it beat at that time. Well, I'm on my way to get the colonoscopy and right now I feel pretty weak and pretty tired and I'll be glad when all this is over with. You know what, I know what's the first thing I'm gonna have when I get out here. Yes. No coffee. I'm gonna have some nice coffee. I'm serious, I want some coffee. I haven't had any for two days. <laughs> all right, and this is basically a, a duplicate consent, but this is the one that Dr. Jones is gonna take back to his office. But again, it's a colonoscopy with Dr. Jones. Okay. A lot of them haven't had a colonoscopy before, um, but a lot of them have had a lot of colonoscopies and they're not nervous at all. We get younger people, they're usually, the people who aren't 50, they're usually a little nervous because they're normally having something because of problems, not just routine screening, so she's done very well. She didn't seem very nervous at all. Have you ever had a colonoscopy? I'm sorry? Have you ever had a colonoscopy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> worried about the prep for the colonoscopy, you think about the chemotherapy, you keep thinking about the medications. If you're worried about the concept of a colonoscopy or, or a tube up your bottom, you know, think about the concept of a colostomy and wearing a bag on your, your side forever because of this preventable issue. So it's uh, it's really great that she's in and I think it's amazing that she's so motivated to, to seek out and try to find uh, the ability to get this done. You know, it's uh, a lot of people, it's easy to balk at something like this where you're not trying to you know, people who want to avoid things don't work this hard. So I think it's a great sign that the information is getting out to people that she's aware and, uh, you know, hopefully we've made a difference in the last few years. Uh, and in 2004, we had clearly followed uh, an average uh, well below that of the nation. In 2004, the project uh, started along with our many partners across the state. By 2006, we had exceeded the national average for screening rates and in 2008 actually extended our percentage lead over the nation, which is increasing as a whole. So we were the state most improved uh, out of 50 from a numerical standpoint from screening rates that did not have multi-million dollar funding, and only South Carolina and Maryland uh, exceeded our improvement over this period of time. So that's a pretty amazing uh, contribution by all the state's partners who are working on this, uh, this issue.
Mary, how you doing? All right, how are you? Good morning. How'd your prep go? <laughs> oh, it went fine. Good, good, good. I'm glad you're here for your screening. Uh, you said you had family history of polyps. Your mother's had yeah, polyps? Yeah, my mother has. And, uh, I, don't, I think she was like in her 50s or 60s. I'm not sure. Here comes some good snoozy man. Here comes this 